welcome to you. Please make yourselves comfortable. Today is Trinity Sunday and traditionally it is the first Sunday after Pentecost and when we celebrate the three aspects of the deity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, that great mystery of faith. We often in our liturgy use the word Emmanuel, which is strictly translated into God with us, referring to that great mystery. Christ being 100% mortal, whilst at the same time 100% divine. And that is known as the hypostatic union. As humble servants of Christ, we cannot begin to unfold such a mystery, but we can, and we do acknowledge it and celebrate the Holy Trinity in all of its glory. And it is that profound mystery that we celebrate today on Holy Trinity Sunday. But before we commence our worship, as ever, a special word of thanks to all those that have made and contributed towards the service here today, especially our organist John Tallon, the vestry team, church wardens and side persons. Thank you so much on behalf of all of us for all you do here. So, if you're able and comfortable to so do, can I ask you to stand as we join together and commence our worship with our first hymn, which is Father of Heaven, Whose Love Profound, and it's number 146, number 146. <laughs> worship using the liturgy card and we will be working to the blue wording here this morning. The Lord is here. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Jesus Christ says to all who truly turn to him. And hear what St. Paul says. This saying is true, and worthy of And hear what St. John says. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God. Bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us join together as we say the Gloria. Glory to God. Right hand of the Father, receive 
Please make yourselves comfortable for our coffee. Our colleague this morning, which we will find on the pew sheet, which you're very welcome to take away with you afterwards. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are gathered together to proclaim your glory. Give thanks for all the blessings we receive from thine inexhaustible store. And pray intercessionally for the sick, the lonely, those in poverty, those who have suffered loss of dignity and those in distress. We pray in penitence and faith to the glory of your kingdom, your works of justice and your promise of peace, hope and salvation for all who truly believe. Heavenly Father, this morning we lift up our hearts to you that you may intervene in our lives and help us overcome all forms of hatred, anger and resentment. Help us to reason, to discern and to make the choice to allow you to transform these feelings to feelings and expressions of your love. Help us to believe and recall what your word says about loving others that if we cannot love those whom we have seen, then we certainly cannot love God whom we have not seen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our Queen. We pray earnestly, Lord, for your servant Elizabeth, set over us in your care to be our Queen. We thank you for her long example of dedicated service and faith. Give her grace and wisdom to fulfil the very duties of her calling. Enrich her in the life of her family and home. And may she always and continue to be a source of strength and inspiration to her people. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our government, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Lord, to bless our government and all leaders of the nation and all nations in all the important decisions that have to be made in our regard. We pray for wisdom for our leaders. We pray for respect for all. We pray for respect for our climate. <coughs> And we pray for respect to one another in all our political dealings. May they act wisely and thoughtfully in all their deliberations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer for our church leaders. Bless Lord Justin, our Archbishop. Our Bishop Nicholas, to whom we owe so much for his dedication and spiritual guidance over the years as he prepares to retire from office into a more personal mission. To Karen, Bishop of Sherborne, as she assumes temporary care of our diocese. And Reverend James, as he assumes his new ministry as our team rector. May they each fulfil their calling in dependence upon your grace and in harmony with your will, that by the power of the Holy Spirit they may accomplish all that you have prepared for them to do as they work for the honour and glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer for peace. Lord, we ask you to bring your gift of peace to the whole world. May mistrust, hatred and conflict 
be replaced by goodwill and trust between hostile nations and people. Change the hearts and minds of all who would destroy peace through aggression and acts of terrorism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the sick. Deal graciously, Lord, with all who are ill or who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Grant to them the assurance of your steadfast love and restore them to the wholeness that is your perfect gift. And whilst we pray in supplication, we also give thanks for answering our prayers and respect of those who blessed through the intervention of the Holy Spirit, now thankfully restored to full health. We thank you with grateful hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, a prayer from Dean Eric Milner White. O Christ, whose wondrous birth means nothing unless we be born again, whose death and sacrifice nothing unless we die unto sin, whose resurrection nothing if thou be risen alone. Raise and exalt us, O Saviour, both now and to the estate of grace, and hereafter to the estate of glory, where the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, now and forever. And let us conclude our prayers as we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. And I invite you all to join with me. You will find it printed on the pew sheet. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with all that Spirit that we are children of God. And if children, their heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, can I ask you to remain comfortable in your seats for a time of perhaps reflective prayer as John plays for us a gradual hymn which is from heaven you came. And if you want to follow the words as a prayer, it's number 175 in the hymn book, number 175. Thank you, John.
able and comfortable to so do, can I ask you to stand as Nora very kindly reads our Gospel for us today. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. Please make yourself comfortable. Thank you for reading the Gospel reading for us today, uh, Nora, and for helping to bring that piece of scripture to life for us with the expression because it's very difficult sometimes to lead into a sermon uh, if somebody doesn't put that feeling into it so thank you for that. We've got a friend who lives on the other side of the town, uh, Mary. She lives alone and she just recently downsized into a new home which requires some different furnishing and she's working to a tight budget. Something she acquired second-hand, but she spotted a new wardrobe on Alison that was absolutely right for the bedroom. The catalogue picture was beautiful. Hanging space, drawers, top cupboard. So she dug into her savings, hit the same key on her laptop and ordered it. Job done. So she thought. Then the delivery man in the van pulled up. Mary rushed to the door in excitement. One wardrobe to sign for, said the man. But Mary's face fell. All she saw being unloaded was a long, thick, flat box. That's my wardrobe, she queried. Yeah, love, flat pack. Nice and easy to put together, don't you fret. They then followed the traditional quick grinding of gears, a bit of wheel spin, some black exhaust smoke, and with that, he was gone, totally out of sight 
just Mary and the box now. Mary opened the box and slid out several flat pieces of wood. Her heart sank. How on earth can that be my loving wardrobe, she muttered. I don't believe it. The picture Mary had seen was of a wardrobe in its three-dimensional splendour. No wonder she found it difficult to understand how the pile of flat pieces in front of her could ever be much use to her. It would take a lot of imagination. You could say a giant leap of faith, if you like, to visualise it. And it probably didn't help that the instructions seemed to be written in Japanese. Now on Trinity Sunday especially, we try to make sense of how different aspects of God fit together into an image that we can understand and use. And we find it difficult to comprehend. When Jesus tried to explain the relationship between himself and God and those who were born of the Spirit, Nicodemus echoed many of us the feeling about the Trinity. How can these things be? He inquired, clearly exasperated. Does reading the Bible's instructions help us fit these pieces together? Jesus asked Nicodemus, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. He simply seems to be implying that someone who had studied the history of God's dealings with his people, someone who worshipped God faithfully and carried out his commandments to the letter, should be able to understand. And yet it certainly isn't very easy. From his knowledge of the scripture, Nicodemus would know about the Spirit of God, having been active in creation. But here was Jesus saying that ordinary people could be born of the Spirit in a new way. Nicodemus saw Jesus as a teacher, but he was sure that he'd come from God, a prophet perhaps. But Jesus stunned him with the announcement that he was God's only son, father, Son and Holy Spirit, the three persons of the Trinity. But the word Trinity, you know, doesn't actually appear anywhere in the Bible. It isn't in our instructions, you could say. Later, centuries of Christians invented the term to describe the idea of the three-dimensional God, the way in which Father, Son and Holy Spirit together show us in our own simplistic mind who God is. Not separate flat pieces to be assembled, but itself an assembly of love, of compassion, and of forgiveness. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. God created the world, created us, and loves us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are different dimensions of his love, creating us, rescuing us, strengthening us in faith. Eternal life starts here. If only we suspend our disbelief, allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and accept that Jesus, yes, Jesus can save us. If only we trust that these things might be even if we can't quite see or understand. Mary needs all of the parts of her wardrobe without the sides, the top will fall down. Also to build these flat pieces into a wardrobe she needs to have a good translation of the instructions, her Bible, study them carefully and follow them. And you know the same applies to our faith, a modern Bible translation with the benefits of the latest scholarship, just as Nicodemus had benefit of Jesus' own teaching to supplement his knowledge of the scripture and some study notes. Mary, well, Mary will probably call upon friends to help. People who have put a wardrobe together before are good at visualising possibilities, and the same applies to us in our faith. Members of a study group, friends in the congregation, all with their own stories to tell of God's love in their individual lives. And the wardrobe is for using. 
The Trinity is not just a theory. In baptism, we are born of the Spirit. As a Christian community sharing this Holy Communion, we are part, an intrinsic part, of that loving, dynamic relationship which is the Trinity. So let's not keep God in a box, flat packed, but share with others the height and depth and breadth of his love in every single piece. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's continue our worship as we stand before the cross and confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally the God of the Father, God from the Lord. This bread and this wine 
has been consecrated such that we may share in the body and blood of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. We join together. We do not presume to come to this your table as such a humble Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in your manifold and great mercies, yeah, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to be the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, as our sinful body is again and of his body. Go in peace of Christ. And may the God of all love and mercy be delighted to dwell within you, and by his infinite wisdom and understanding, please him to grant each of you the benefit of his eternal blessing, for life eternal and everlasting bliss. Amen. Amen.